Welcome to another episode of Boomer Bus on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host Terry, and today we will be looking at the secondary for the 22 NFL Draft. Um, not a ton of safeties. Uh, it was really only three in the top 50 uh, off the list I was using, but I uh, did one extra person, but still not that many. Plus, for the corners, uh, it might be short. I mean, not super short. So here's the thing. Um, if you've been following me, you know I've, I've started to say this years ago. It is really difficult to evaluate corners because we just don't or I don't have all the 22 film, all of the all 22 film. And so with corners, it's just really hard to see what is happening downfield unless you get replay shots. And if you have all 22 it's still kind of difficult because you do need some of those close-up shots to see how they play through the ball. And so you need both. If you got coach film, most of the time you won't have like a zoom up shot or anything because the end zone won't be close enough. Um, and then if you're watching the telecast, they might replay it or they might not. So it sucks. I mean, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The, uh, not the studios, but like the television and the networks. They got the best film. We don't. And so, like I said, the coach film, you get the end zone view, you get the uh, sideline view. And so the sideline view is important, but you need kind of also those close up shots. So long story short, it gets frustrating to me because especially you you start to I wouldn't say miss early on. I would say miss. But, uh, you know, I stopped projecting and really just um looking at prospects but still i would say i got things wrong because you don't truly know now the one thing i will say is that has been true is you gotta have to be a great athlete it ain't too many corners in the league that um got drafted and made it that a bad athlete so you do have to have the prerequisite uh athleticism and that's been the theme of this year is terry recognizing the immense value of athleticism while still understanding that it doesn't make you good but it it, it does kind of become like a pre prerequisite for a lot of teams at least when it comes to valuing people in the draft so there's that. All right. So first off, we got Andrew Boo from Clemson. I like him. And what I've seen from most of these corners, and again, it might be just a product of the offenses, is they are much better in the run than corners used to be. Way better. And I don't want to tie this at all, especially because uh, he hasn't uh, started doing this till recently. But I think about Jalen Ramsey and uh of course he played linebacker and safety at one point in college but he is a corner one of the top corners but he's a guy that will go out and hit and there's other people too and not everybody's as big as Jalen but and I'm not attributing this to him but this is what I think of I see these guys being not only not scared to hit but like celebrating and being excited when they go out and make a hit in open field and again at one point corners could get away with that when you start doing the stuff you did with spread offenses and things, they had to become better tacklers. And I don't think it, anybody's like amazing, but they are much better. Uh, I love Booth though. Um, Booth, uh, not only just his ability and willingness to go tackle, but he showed some real strength. He threw some receivers like blocking him. Yeah, it was nasty, but excellent, uh, change of direction, movement. Um, and really, when you talk about corner, obviously the long speed and the 40 tells you that and all that. But your ability to change direction, your change of direction, your hips, your foot, your feet, all that. Um, that the, the better that is, the much better, obviously, you can be in something like man coverage and everything. And then the ball skills. Are you someone that can track the ball? Uh, please do not be a guy that face guards. Can you go up and get the ball? All that good stuff. And I like Booth. Booth is built like a lot of these corners. Six foot, 200, long arms, long legs, really fast, really quick. Um, plays again with an attitude. I really enjoy, uh, watching what I could of him. Stingley, man, look, uh, I don't know the extent of his injury and where he is right now. Um, I believe that's why he's not as high um, in a lot of people's mocks and all that stuff, which I don't really care about the mocks. But 
Um, if he can make a recovery and if he's on track, it, it is always scary with an injury. But pre-injury, man, there was no question. I have not seen ball skills like that in a very long time, if ever. Uh, the man, and it's funny because obviously it's a lot more than what I'm about to say, but sometimes it seems like every year when I watch these people, it's just like, turn around. All you have to do is turn around and you will be able to be a much better, better player. And it seems like Stingley understood that. Instead of face guarding and just trying to put their hands on people, which they need to change. They need to sink the rules up into college. I don't love the defensive interference rules and all that, but they need to sink it up because in college they let them do too much, and then you got a bunch of corners that don't know how to cover when they go to the league. Anyway, Stingley, he just kind of said, no, I'm not going to do that. And it reminds me a bit of Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs ain't face guarding nobody. Trayvon Diggs is looking for that ball just like you are. And Stingley, I think, did a great job running with people, transitioning um, into uh, looking for the ball, and then attacking the ball. And, I mean, it showed up in a lot of his plays. So, um, tremendous ball skills uh, and really good athlete. But, again, I don't know what the extent of his injury. So, that's the only thing with him. Uh, Sauce Gardner. Uh uh, was it a mod sauce? I like sauce though. Um, really good too. I think to me, he wasn't the weakest, but he was one of the lower tier in the run support, but still really good. I mean, he's a real skinny dude, 188, very thin. Um, so I get it, but he still got dirty. And so I'm, uh, very curious to see what his measurables are and everything, but very long corner, but fast, uh, good change of direction. Um, good ball skills. So, uh, for me, uh, uh, I will go through. I think it's like four first four corners. They're all really like prototype, um, number one corners in the league. Not to say that they are and they have skill and all that, but what I'm saying is they have that prototypical build and size and profile. And Sauce is one of those guys. So it becomes a little bit of a pick 'em. Um, from what I've, some people like Booth, obviously some people are scared about Stingley, but, uh, Sauce seems to be one that a lot of people are high on too. And I, you know, again, much like the other two, I, I think he's definitely, um, somebody that can become a number one corner. Then we got Ro Roger McCreary, McCre McCreary, that's hard to say, uh, <laughs> I liked him too, good six foot one ninety. Uh definitely a lot more built than sauce. I know they weight is similar, but he's more muscle than anything. And so um definitely not afraid to get in the mix in the run game. Um and all that good stuff. He'll take on blockers, blah blah blah. But he made his bones kinda in man coverage. Uh some of these guys did a bit of both, but he made his bones kinda in man coverage and Really, I mean, all you got to really watch is him versus Alabama, and that, that'll that tell you what you need to know about him. Um, I don't think he's elite speed. I don't think he's perfect, but I think he does what your number one corner, or at least good corners, is what you want, and that's make the windows hard to throw in. And he's a guy that's going to make you pay for those bad windows. Um, he, yeah, he just... <laughs> If you overthrow it, or not overthrow it, but if you underthrow it, if you throw it behind, whatever, he's going to make you pay. Really great ball skills. Um, and so, yeah, a tough, more rugged number one corner. Trent McDuffie and Kyler Gordon. I don't even know. The, the problem is another problem with corners. They play bail coverage. Some teams do this. You can't tell anything from bell coverage. You just can't. You can't tell how well they react. You can't tell how fast they are. You can't tell anything. And so I got frustrated at some point. And I was just like, there's not, there's nothing I'm getting from this tape. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of teams they played would just run all the time. Um, I know a lot of people are excited about McDuffie personally. Watching him, I'm not sure how fast he is. Um, 
good motor and all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm not sure how fast he is. But again, just wasn't able to really give those two the evaluation they deserved. Then you got Kyir Elam, I believe Matt Elam's brother, because they both went to Florida, so I'm going to say that. But he does look like him. I liked him. He's the one that definitely wasn't really trying to get involved in the run game. Uh, more like that prototypical corner, but I liked his speed. I think he's going to be at the top end. Um, the way he was running with receivers, especially on crossers, which is one of the hardest ones, you almost always in trail. He was not trailing. He was stride for stride with some of them. And so he's long-legged and all that. Um, long arms can really, he's got a nice catch radius. He can go up and all that. Um, and really good movement. So I seen him play a good mix of, uh, man and zone. I thought he was really good in both. Uh, I don't think he gives you what any of these other guys give you in a run game, but I do think he has the intangibles to really be one of those top tier corners. So, um, it's going to be a pick em. It's going to be interesting. Again, Stingley is just, it's a question of what his health is. Um, and then the rest of the guys, it, it's going to be, to me, when I was watching this, I was like, this for me would come down to the, the type of football player they are. Because, you know, obviously we'll have the combine and pro days. So you could just, one of them could just run a four, uh, seven, but <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. And so if they measure out the same, you look at the games, you look at the profile they have, you look at um, the measurables, and if it comes down similar, then to me it's like, what type of person am I getting? Am I getting that guy that's a gamer that loves the game? Now, some people won't care. Some people don't care about the personality. Some people like a little edginess, and so they'll make that decision, but for me, that's what it would come down to. I would I would have to just rely on the personality and IQ of the player. But you you really got some similar flavors, which is cool because you you typically get like one guy like this in a draft. You got at least like five, and so it, and plus again, I don't know what McDuffie and Gordon are. Um, some people are talking about them testing well and maybe shooting up, but um, I don't know what they are as players. Uh, unfortunately, because of the film and the stupid bail technique that uh, <laughs> watched him like to run. But I, I think this is an extremely strong corner class. So then we bounce to the safeties. Number one, we got Kyle Hamilton, Notre Dame. People talking top five. With me, I, I, I don't know. So I, I don't know. I, I really, I, I'm. I understand what he does. He He's very much like some of the uh, hybrid guys we've seen prior. But, and so I understand that he's not just, you know, middle of the field safety, like a prototype. He's in the box as a linebacker almost. He's in the slot. Uh, a lot of teams, especially with 3-3 stacks, run like um, what we call a bracket coverage. So he's kind of like a robber in a sense. So he plays a, a kind of a, a, a something that doesn't match to the NFL perfectly, but I get it. We've seen it before. The size is incredible, 6'4", 220. Um, match with his movement, that's where a lot of people are talking about. I don't think he's an elite athlete. I don't. I think his change of direction is good, but his hips are slightly stiff to me. Um, again, that doesn't mean you can't run things down. I do think he can, but I don't know that he has typical safety range. Um, I definitely, I mean, what I saw, he definitely is not going single high middle of the field and helping. And to be honest with you, a lot of safeties are not able to do that in the league that are either starting or on the field during those passing plays. Um, I, maybe offense is getting a little more sophisticated, but man, it just seems like they, they cannot make that play. Un, um, unless you're talking about like a Jesse Bates, Kevin Byer, and that's why they're so, uh, pivotal because they can go from middle of the field and make a play. Um, but anyway, 
So he can't do that. I do think he could play deep half if you like cover two team, but his bread and butter has been in the short to medium area and um, breaking on passes. Uh, I think he, he, in the run game, he's good. He'll trigger, he'll come downhill, but I think he's kind of an average tackler and they didn't really blitz him in the stuff that I saw this year. So I don't know what he is as a blitzer. So those are kind of my takeaways. I get that he's kind of top tier for everybody, and I see all the intangibles. I don't think he's the athlete I thought he would be, um, but he's still good. And I do think he's going to play a specific role. Um, it's not a guy like Minka. Minka, I do think you put him in the back end, he can make free safety type plays. I don't think Kyle Hamilton's that type. But I do think in the short to medium area and in man coverage, I think that might be where he really helps because he's got the size to go up against those big tight ends. And I don't know if you put him on Tyreek Hill, but you getting him on receivers that ain't burners, I do think he could play some pretty good man coverage. So I'll see what they do, who picks him and how to use him. Um, and I recognize he's the best out of the group because the group ain't that great. But uh, I don't think I was blown away by him like everybody else. Uh, Jaquan Brisker, so interesting. 6'1", 200, kind of that, you know, newer age safety size. Um, but, man, he plays an old school game. Uh, as far as he plays a strong safety game and he's built more like a free safety. That's what I'll say. Um, I don't know what his athleticism is. I really don't. They didn't put him in man coverage really in anything I saw. The man was like a glorified linebacker. Not to say that, that that's a little hyperbole. He definitely played in the back end and did some stuff. But mostly what he did was in the box, in the slot. And so that threw me off because that's not the type of player he looks like he's supposed to be. But that's what he did. So the question is, what can he do in the league? I don't know. I know he can't do single high. There's a few reps I saw, and really that's all it takes. Uh, it, he got toasted. I mean toasted. Like, you were supposed to be helping over the top with the corner, and there was no way he was making that, and no no life he was making that. And so I don't think he has middle of the field potential, but similar to Hamilton, I think he'll be able to do two shell, cover two type stuff, uh, man two type stuff. But I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, you get guys like him that aren't the biggest, but they, their game is just strong safety. And he might be one of those guys because the biggest thing that jumped off the screen for me was his run support. I mean, the man was in the mix. He not a scared. He not scared to tackle. He's not scared to take on blocks. That's pretty much what he was doing. It was just in the run game. So, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see. Now, I will say he did show some crazy hops, some good ball skills. So that's always good. You want to be able to see that. But I don't know what his range is as a safety on the back end. Daxton Hill out of Michigan. A lot of hype. I am. I, I don't know. I really don't know. He's listed at six foot. I wonder what he measures in at the combine because he looked pretty short. But the thing is, he played exclusively nickel. And obviously every team has a nickel, but I don't know too many teams that use a safety at nickel. I mean, there's a few like of the top safeties that you could think of, but mostly people have a nickel corner. And so I don't know. I didn't see any reps of him at typical safety. And so the question becomes, what what does he do in the league? Um, I think he's a great athlete and we'll see what he tests. But um typically if you're that good where you could be that type of corner you would play a corner and so i don't know we'll see is he athletic enough to become a corner he's definitely got the size of a corner <laughs> and so um i don't know if he's a straight nickel because i see him in the first round a lot i'm not drafting the nickel in the first round i don't know he wasn't that shut now for me to put him in, uh, in the first round as a nickel so uh, I'm curious as to what teams are going to place him at. Um, I think he, he's a gamer. He, he'll get after. I, don't th I think, you know, people going to move him. It's not like he moving anybody. But he'll, he runs around blocks. He chases things down. He's got a high motor. He ain't scared to get in there. But as far as coverage, is he, you know, are they going to see him as a back-end guy or as a nickel? 
Then we got Lewis Sien. Sien? I forgot how to pronounce it. 6'1", 200 out of Georgia. He was pretty good. Uh, he played more the, the typical two high, cover two safety in the slot sometimes, single high, but he's not a single high cat. Um, I think, you know, deep half is his perfect range where he can go, um, he can cheat over and play to the sideline. And then he, he likes coming downhill. Um, I don't love his tackling. He definitely hits people, but he it's not good technique. He's tackling so high, he's going to get trucked a couple of times if he don't wrap up better and learn how to tackle better. But, again, he's not scared of it. He'll come downhill. He'll put his nose in it. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. Again, it's really weird. You got these guys. Like, if you're 200 pounds, typically you're not a strong safety. But that's kind of the, the role these guys have been playing. And so, I don't know if it's going to be the case where these are some guys that are just a little more hybrid. Or if you're just going to have some smaller, <laughs> strong safeties. Maybe they put on weight in the league. I don't know. But... Um, I like this movement as an athlete. He so you know, some good range, like I said, to the sideline from the hash. And I think he, uh, recognized plays for the most part, but yeah, um, I don't know. I think he's solid. So, so that's the safeties in the corners. That's the secondary, uh, tough, tough to grade, especially safeties without, uh, all 22, but, um, again, you look at the type of athletes there are, you look at the type of game they've had to play, and you you uh, kind of confirm it at the combine and then see where you think they would project. So that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share around, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.